everybody, this is Jen with Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to be talking about how to grow sweet potato slips. Sweet potatoes are a tropical type plant and they grow differently than regular potatoes. They're not in the nightshade family even though they share the same type of name. So today I'm going to show you how to grow sweet potato slips that you need in order to grow sweet potatoes. So come on with me to the kitchen and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, to grow sweet potato slips for planting, all you need is basically a sweet potato. Um, organic prefers so it doesn't have all the pesticides on it, but just a general uh, sweet potato. You're also going to need some filtered water, uh, some toothpicks, cutting board and then I just use a wide mouth mason jar this is the pint size mason jar so very simply you're going to just cut your um, sweet potato in half if it's a smaller sweet potato you can leave it whole but generally I cut it in half because uh, you can start two sweet potatoes if you want by cutting it in half so you just cut it in half like so. You see this one's already got some uh, growth on it and stuff but it's perfectly fine. So take that. Then you're going to take your toothpicks. You've probably seen your mom or grandma grow potatoes or sweet potatoes on their kitchen window or something. This is basically what you do. I put four in just to make sure that it's a stable base. Some people do three. But, uh, actually, I'm going to go a little bit further up. But uh, you want to put it about an inch up from the bottom there. Right. And if your toothpick happens to snap because you're pressing too hard, no big deal. Just put a new one. because sometimes these are very dense. So there we go, toothpicks. Then your jar. Filtered water is best. I'm actually going to need to get some more water. So yeah, filtered water is best because not everybody's tap water is something that um, you know that you want to grow food in some sometimes you got chloride or fluoride in your water sometimes you might have really hard water like we do um, so you got lots of rust and calcium in there and you really don't want that for trying to uh, start plants you want to give them the best that you can so start them with um, the filtered water first and then you simply take your potato and put it down in there oops see it busted my toothpick So there we go. You just let that sit uh, in a sunny windowsill um, until it starts sprouting or until you start seeing little hairs form, form, form at the bottom here. And uh, just keep an eye on it. Uh, you might want to change your water out and it's that's very easy to do. You just tip the water out like so. Not all over your table but uh, and then just uh, fill it with some fresh water if you have to so it doesn't get skunky. I'm going to show you a sweet potato that uh, I started in the water um, just after Christmas um, but it had already started sprouting on top so I had a head start but I'm going to show you what it looks like now and uh, what to do once you uh, get it growing so <clears throat> all right so this is what your sweet potato is going to start looking like eventually See all the, these are what's called the slips. They're the little vines that start growing. And then, um, take this out of here. You can see the, the roots formed. Um, when they start forming, they're very fine. That's why they, they, they say they look like hairs um, going. And then if you look on the slips themselves, uh, you can see that they've got roots that are starting to form on them as well. 
So um, I had this going in a tote because I have cats and they'll they'll eat this. So I have to ha keep my plants in a very tall tote where the cats can't reach them. But once your uh, potatoes get to this stage, your slips, once they get this large, that's when you want to start breaking them off and start putting them in their own container. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so to get your slips prepared, because you don't plant this yet, this is not ready yet, that's why you have to start these quite a few months ahead of time before you plant them in the ground. This is just the step one. Now we gotta go to step two. So you're gonna take your potato out of its container here, and we're gonna carefully detach the, the plants from the tuber. So. You just pop them off as carefully as you can because you don't want to break them. And sometimes they get all jumbled up with each other, so just take your time. And they'll pop off almost like the eyes of a regular potato do. So there we have all of our slips off and you can actually put this back in the water because it's still perfectly fine, it's not rotten, it's got plenty of life left and since it has roots already um, it's got a, um, you know, a good head start. So you can go ahead and just put this back in the water and uh, grow some more slips. Like so. Alright and then we're going to take these and untangle them. See how many we actually have. Okay, it looks like I have about nine separate plants, maybe ten here. There we go, ten separate uh, slips. So that's pretty good. And like I said, some of them have already started forming a uh, lot of roots on them already. They're a lot like tomatoes as far as they'll form more roots along the uh, central stem there. And this is good because uh, you're going to put this in the water just like we did the, the potato. And we're actually going to grow these roots out further. So, grab our water here. And what I like to do is to prevent uh, rotting is make sure that um, anything green you take off about uh, three inches above the the base where all the roots are so this whole area is nice and clear of green now actually take one more off that'll prevent um, rotting along here which you do not want and you're just gonna set that in there that's why you want your slips to be at least six to seven inches long because you're going to have to take some of the foliage off again taking about three inches up here I'm going to stick that down in there And if you don't get the hairs in the water at this point in time, don't worry about it. As long as you got a good healthy stem, you know, um, like there's not a lot of hairs on this one. I'm going to break this off here because it's a bunch of stuff going on. But there's not a lot of hairs on this yet, which is fine. It's a very good healthy vine. 
So it should root on its own. We're just going to again clear off the leaves at the bottom portion. And then just stick that in. Oops, I actually broke the stem. So we're going to break that off where I broke the stem and just work our way back up a little bit. We can do that because there's roots here and even if not, like I said, it um, does put roots out on its own. So it's a very forgiving process. Stick that down in there. <clears throat> couple here. Okay. Like so. And then this last one here. It's not really in good shape. It's actually broke right there. It's not long enough to put in here. Um, and not risk having this start to rot and causing the water to go bad. So I'm just going to put these in my compost pile later. So, but that's all there is to it. You just put them in the water. Um, it's okay if they hang over, you know, like this, as long as their roots are in there. And if you have to add more water, now's the time to do it. Because you can see exactly how much water you do need. And then just set this back in a nice sunny window and uh, wait for it to really start forming some more roots. And then I'll show you uh, the next step in another video once it's almost time to transplant these guys. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for uh, new updates as we go along. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who might uh, be inspired by this. And uh, as always, I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed today. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.